Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to reseal the crankcase on your BR500 and BR600 powerheads. So what I have here is the block from a BR500 steel blower. It's going to be the same thing for the steel BR600 blower. By the way, this is a four-stroke engine. It's called the Formix. It does use two-cycle engine oil in the fuel, even though it is a four-stroke, but there is no oil in the crankcase on this one. And a common problem that I run across with these is that the bottom part of the crankcase will start to leak. So it's good to take the bottom engine pan here off, replace the crank seals while you're at it, reseal it, and usually that fixes the problem. And you can see that this one was leaking over here. Now if you want to get more specific, you can do an engine leak test by plugging the intake here, plugging up the impulse line and the spark plug. That test there takes a bit more time, but it will isolate specifically where your engine is leaking. However, on this engine here, I know it's already been leaking here, so I'm going to just go ahead and reseal it. As you can see, I've already taken the block out of the blower itself. So at this point here, what you need to do is remove the 13 millimeter nut that holds this flywheel on. And what I've done is taken off the spark plug because I will not be using my impact to remove the nut. You can do damage that way. I'm going to put this piston stop in. It is a steel piston stop. Now what this will do is lock in the piston. And now with your ratchet and socket, just gently remove that nut. You wouldn't want to push too hard if the nut was seized for some reason. Now remove the piston stop here. Now we'll be using this puller. You can see the part number on it, 5910-893-0801. I'm going to screw it onto the crankshaft. And now just tap the puller, wear your safety glasses when you do this. And it's that easy. You can see the flywheel is loose. Now just a quick tip here, you want to check the condition of the key inside the flywheel. It's that part right here. And this one is still good. Sometimes you will find that the key will be sheared. If it is sheared, just replace it. Now we need to remove the engine pan over here. There are four T27 Torx screws. And here's a good tool for that. You can buy this from your steel dealer. It's a T27 Torx screwdriver. I'm going to loosen them manually by hand with that tool. And I'll use my impact. Now we need to separate the engine pan. I'm just going to tap it with a brass hammer lightly. And now with the engine pan off, do not remove this from the case because you could throw off the timing. What you want to do at this point here is clean off all the RTV silicone that's on here. Make sure none goes into the crankcase. And clean the bottom part of the engine pan over here. Now I've put the engine pan in some old fuel and I'm just going to clean it with a paintbrush. You just want to get all that oil off. And now I'm just going to remove the bigger parts with a knife. And I also have this scraper here. This is probably the most tedious part of this repair. And again, make sure this does not go inside the engine. If you see little spots, just remove them. So do this all the way around. You want to get as much of the old silicone off as possible. You can also remove the seals if you want. Just pull them out. And they are both the same on each side. And I'll pull this one out. And you can also use a light 150 grit emery paper. And finish it off with like a 300. So again, this is very tedious. Take your time. Don't let any dirt get inside the engine. And if you do get a bit of dirt inside the engine, just vacuum it with a shop vac. 
what I like to use is a bit of power tool and I spray it here and then with my 400 sandpaper after I've used the 150 I just go over it makes it nice and smooth it also helps to clean off any dirt left and then when you wipe it up it's nice and clean so this side here is good enough if you don't have this power tune you can always use some card cleaner on here as well and it does an extremely good job and I'm also going to clean where the seals go in I'm just going to use a screwdriver rub the rag here I'm just trying to remove any traces of oil and do this on the other side as well now I'm also going to run the bottom engine pan on my wire brush I'm just lightly going to clean the rest of the silicone there with that Now at this point here I'm going to spray a bit of card cleaner just to wipe it up again. And do the same with the bottom pan. The most important parts to have nice and dry of oil is the outer surface. Now before reassembling the engine pan, I'm just going to put a few drops of two cycle engine oil. You just need a few drops. This will just give the engine some oil right off the bat. And it's very important that you have some Durco, you can buy this from your steel dealer as well. And now before I reinstall the engine pan, I'm going to dip my finger in oil here. Just going to put a bit of oil on the crankshaft, just to help out the seal. And again, this is two cycle engine oil. And I'm going to apply a thin film on both sides of the engine. You don't need to put too much because you don't want it to get squeezed inside the crankcase. And I'll do the same on the engine pan. And I will put just a tad where the seal sits. And I will also put some on the outside of the seals, just a thin film because I couldn't really get down under here to seal that. Again, it's probably not necessary, but I just want to do it as a precaution. Now I'm going to insert the seal on this side. And the reason I put the oil there was to make it more slippery for the seal. And I'll push the seal as far as it will go. And I'll install the other seal on the other side. And you can see here that the seal sits right against the crankcase, so you cannot push it in too far. Now grab the engine pan, and it's going to go on this way. Now get your four screws ready to install the engine pan back on. It is recommended to use Loctite on these screws. So I'm just going to put a little bit on each. Now before tightening up the screws, make sure your seals are pushed in as far as they need to go. Now I'm just going to start the screws with my impact on its lowest speed. Now I'll do this by crisscrossing.
Now with the torque wrench you want to tighten them up in a crisscross pattern again. I'm going to tighten them up between 8 and 9 foot pounds. So I'm just going to go around. I'm not going to torque them immediately. There's one. And that's all there is to it. And that's all there is to resealing that part of your engine block. Now another area of your engine block that you can reseal while you're at it is this cover here. Just remove the four T27 torque screws. Now just pop the cover. Now watch the two pins under there. Be extremely careful. If a pin comes off like that, just remove it. And immediately put it back into the cam. Now the inside of the cover I will clean on my wire brush. And now you can clean the cover with some carb cleaner. What's great about carb cleaner is it cleans really good and also dries very fast. And now to clean this part you'll have to do like you did previously with the bottom engine pan. Just use whatever works for you and try not to scratch the surface. And now seal both surfaces again. And don't put too much on there. Now this is the same stuff that steel uses to originally seal their engines. So you know if you use Durco it's good stuff. By the way it's not necessary to let the Durco dry before you put the cover on. Now make sure this is in its right place. Reinstall the cover. Now you can use Loctite on these screws as well. Now I'm just going to tighten them up very lightly. And do this in a crisscross pattern. That one was tight. And now I'm going to tighten these up at around 3 inch pounds. And we're already there. And now at this point you have your engine completely resealed. And it's a good thing to put in the new crank seals as I did because sometimes they do leak. Some symptoms of that will be poor idling, poor acceleration. Sometimes it's even impossible for it to run properly. Now what you want to do is reinstall the flywheel. Remember that it does have a built-in key, which you'll need to match to the keyway hole on the crankshaft. Then you need your 13 millimeter nut. You'll need to insert the piston stop. And the manual recommends to tighten up that nut to 265 inch-pounds or 30 newton meters. Now remove the piston stop and you're going to be done. So that's all there is guys to resealing the whole engine block on your BR500 or BR600. If you continue to get symptoms you may want to check the intake boot here as well. Make sure there are no cracks in the intake boot and also in the impulse line over here. Sometimes you do need to replace the whole carburetor. Alright guys I've got the engine block back in the blower. 
Actually, it's a BR550. The same procedure will apply to the BR500 and 600. Now, I didn't install the shroud here because I want to show you that it is actually the same block that I repaired. And you can see the Durco over here. I just put a few spacers here to be able to put the recoil without the shroud back on. Now, the symptoms before I did the resealing on this machine is that it would not power up. You could not adjust the carburetor. It would not idle properly and rev up as well. So thanks again for watching guys. Make sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and have yourselves a great day.